This is Maria, the founder of Four Season Foraging, coming to you today from sunny Minneapolis. Uh, usually I actually come to you from Minneapolis, but I just wanted to point out the cityscape today because the plant we're going to be looking for and talking about is really common in cities, um, also in suburban areas and the countryside. It really kind of just grows everywhere and that plant is black nightshade. And the black nightshade we're gonna be looking at today just grows a few blocks from here. So clearly you can find it growing anywhere, even in the middle of the city. But before I get into the video, I just want to say thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It helps me out a lot. So I am here in this beautiful parking lot to talk about black nightshade. Specifically, I want to talk about the berries of black nightshade, but we'll get into that just a little bit later. So what is black nightshade? Well, it's this little low growing herbaceous plant right here, and it's in the genus Solanum. and there's several species that are all really similar and can be used in similar ways. So rather than naming them out, I'll just list them in the title down below me here. Black nightshade, when you find it in the city, often grows in places like this. So parking lots, vacant lots, sidewalk cracks. You'll find it in yards and gardens as well. And in the countryside, it'll be in sunny open areas, fields and trail sides, and maybe even open woods. And black nightshade is really common across the United States and Canada. It grows in almost all the states. So wherever you are in those areas, you're pretty likely to find it. And black nightshade, as the name implies, is in the nightshade family, but that doesn't automatically make it poisonous, right? So there's a lot of different nightshades that we eat regularly, including peppers and tomatoes and potatoes and eggplant, and obviously those are not poisonous. So just because there are some poisonous nightshades doesn't mean black nightshade is poisonous. It is actually edible, and there are some sources that claim it to be poisonous, but as someone who's eaten it on many, many occasions, I can tell you from my experience that it is not. Of course, if you have any sensitivities or allergies to nightshade, you do want to avoid this plant. And as I alluded to in the beginning, I'm gonna be focusing on the berries today. That's because the berries are just easier to eat for beginning foragers. The greens of black nightshade are also edible. Now is not the time of year you wanna eat those. You wanna get them when they're really young and tender and fresh in the spring. And there's just some precautions you have to take around it because you want to avoid the toxic alkaloid solanine that can be found in the plant. So that's why I don't recommend it to beginning foragers, but it is edible. You just have to make sure to get it early and young and to cook it really well and to not eat it if it tastes bitter to you. So I recommend just doing more research before you try the greens. And I specifically recommend Sam Thayer's article about it. He gets really in depth on harvest and preparation and also into the whole myth of black nightshade being poisonous and why that's a thing in Western countries. So I will link that in the description box down below. It's quite a lengthy read, but it's super interesting and I recommend you check it out if it's a subject that interests you. So how do you identify black nightshade? Well, first and foremost, I want to start off by saying that it does have a poisonous lookalike, which is called deadly nightshade or belladonna. The Latin name is Atropa belladonna but that plant is not very common in North America. It's indigenous to Europe. So if you live in North America, it's not a major concern, but if you live in a locality where it happens to be prevalent, you should know about it. 
and you should know about it anyway, just in case you ever happen to come across it. So black nightshade, as I mentioned earlier, is an herbaceous plant. So no woody growth on the stems and it has these egg-shaped leaves, the margins of which are often wavy or really coarsely serrated. And it's really common for the leaves to be bug eaten. The bugs really love this plant. So you can probably even tell from back there that these leaves are just riddled with holes. And then the flower that comes out looks a lot like a miniature tomato flower. So it's got five petals. The petals are white or they can be pink or purple tinged. And the center is yellow. And those flowers come out in early summer and then they'll give way to these small green berries. They're basically pea size and they grow in bunches. And eventually those berries will turn this dark, dark purple, almost black color. And that's the point at which you wanna harvest them is when they're fully ripe. So how does that differ from deadly nightshade, you may ask? Well, that's a good question and something you should know about. So black nightshade, first of all, this plant here is actually pretty big for the nightshades I usually see. Uh, when I find them growing in like sidewalk cracks and like gravelly lots and places like that, I'll sometimes find them just like super small, like maybe six inches. This one, if I stood it upright, would be maybe two feet tall, but you can see that it has a really spreading growth form. So it's more wide than it is tall. Belladonna will usually be taller than wide. It gets quite tall and it doesn't have the same kind of sprawling nature that Black Nightshade does. And then the Belladonna flowers are very different. They don't really look anything like a tomato flower. They are a brownish purple color and the petals are all fused together. So it kind of looks like a little tube. And the leaves look pretty similar, but they're not usually as bug eaten. And the margins of the leaves are always entire. So no, no waviness or serrations in the margins of the leaves of Belladonna. And you can tell the difference even just by looking at the berries. So when you're out picking black nightshade berries, you should be able to immediately tell that what you're picking is indeed black nightshade and not belladonna. So the berries of black nightshade are really small. They're like pea sized, about a quarter inch or a third of an inch across. Whereas those of belladonna are more like a cherry size and those of black nightshade grow in these little bunches whereas those of belladonna grow singly and you can also tell the difference if you look at the sepals so the sepals are the little it's like kind of looks like a little five pointed star and in this case it grows at the top of the plant their little leaf-like appendages. So if you look straight on at a black nightshade, the diameter of the berry goes well beyond the diameter of the sepals. Whereas if you look at a belladonna berry, the diameter of the sepals extends way beyond the diameter of the berry, where it's like, can even be twice as much length of the sepals versus that of the berry. So that should be pretty obvious, the difference there when you're picking. Also just wanted to mention that there is another poisonous nightshade that's really common and that's bittersweet nightshade, but you shouldn't have any trouble distinguishing it from black nightshade. First of all, bittersweet nightshade is a vine. So unlike black nightshade, it does have woody growth. The leaves look somewhat similar, but they're very distinctive. They have this like arrow shape at the bottom. And then the berries also grow in clusters, but they're bright red. So there's no way that you should 
mistake the berries of bittersweet nightshade for black nightshade. But I just wanted to let you know that it's out there and to avoid it. So how do you eat black nightshade? Well, as I said, I'm focusing on the berries today. And those you want to get ideally in late summer, though we are lucky to still have a few berries hanging on the plant here. And I'm just going to try this one and see if it's any good. Yeah, it still tastes good. So to me, it tastes a lot like a cherry tomato, except like a very, very sweet version of a cherry tomato. Uh, I actually have a friend who claims that they taste like Fruity Pebbles, which I can see where he comes from because it does have that like fruity sweet kind of taste, but I wouldn't necessarily take it that far. I think it also depends on where it grows. I often intentionally let the black nightshade that grows in my garden just come up and grow and proliferate. And the garden soil is like, you know, really nice and composted. And so the black nightshade I've had growing in there is like enormous and way bigger than any black nightshade I've seen growing anywhere else. And the berries that came off of there were like super tasty, like super sweet and really good. So if you happen to have a garden or a yard and you see it coming up, you can just like, you know, help it out a little and you'll be rewarded. <laughs> now, as I mentioned earlier, you do want to wait for the berries to be completely ripe when you pick them. So they should be nearly black in color all the way around the berry. When they're not ripe, they're green. And then there's kind of an intermediate stage where they'll have like some kind of purplish black color and some greenish color. So don't eat it at that stage. Be patient and wait until it's fully ripe and nearly black all the way around. And the reason for that is because the berry also contains the toxin solanine and it's in the berry when the berry is not ripe. But when it ripens, then the toxin has dissipated. So it is then safe to eat, but you don't want to eat it when it's unripe because it could be in high enough concentrations where it would hurt you. So once you pick the black nightshade berries, you can just eat them as they are. They're super good. Just pop them in your mouth. They're really tasty. You could also put them in yogurt or use it kind of like any other berry in granola, for example, or in baked goods. It is a little different from usual berries, like I said, because it has a kind of tomato-y taste. So you might want to just experiment with it first a little bit and make sure that you like using it as you would use a berry. I've had people ask me about making salsa or tomato sauce or other tomato-esque products from it. I haven't actually tried that. I really like it as a sweet berry and I usually eat it in yogurt or with granola or that kind of thing. But if you have experience using it more like a tomato, I would be really curious to hear about it. So put your comments down below and I'd love to hear it. So that concludes my video about Black Nightshade. I hope that you learned a few things and that you're excited to go try some Black Nightshade for yourself. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It's a great way to help me out for free. But if you do happen to have a few extra dollars a month, you can head over to my Patreon. The link is down below in the description box. And on there, you can pledge a monthly dollar amount to help me keep producing these free informative videos for you all. So if you're able to do that, I would super, super appreciate it. If not, that's okay too. Either way, happy foraging. Thank you.